Thank you for, for coming on. So, so Dave's uh, very tight on time. He's running to a, uh, an appointment, but uh, we wanted to get him here just to get his take. We heard a great analysis from him yesterday. He's he published this this great piece on carbonite. I don't know if you saw the carbonite. He's like Peter Gamage who comes economics. in, tells us the uh, yeah. what's going on in baseball. So give us right? the inside so baseball, Dave. What have you seen today? What's interesting? The Peter uh, Gamage of the analyst new, industry. Come on, tell us. Any new disruptions that you see or calls that you want to make? Zynga. The Zynga, you wrote a piece. Zynga case study is awesome. I think it's a good, it's a good um, progression from a, of a startup from public cloud to private cloud. And those guys, I mean, in that growth phase that those guys are in, it worked perfectly for them. And the Going from commodity, right? Yeah, yeah. The commodity-based cloud was really the point you well, were making. Yeah, and then the most interesting point there is they built a commodity cloud in the enterprise, not an enterprise cloud in the enterprise. And, and I think that's a huge bifurcation in cloud today is you got enterprise guys backing existing business models into what they're calling a cloud. We're cloud. Yeah, yeah, we're <laughs> cloud. Hey, we do cloud. And then you got, you know, the the guys that clean slate view of the world, how would you build this thing? And and the, the answer is much more along the lines of what Zynga's doing than maybe what a, a, a you know the legacy vendors would have you believe. Meaning layering services on top of the commodity cloud. Yeah, starting with that base level and then layering services on top. I mean, it's very much, you know, the complexity is much more in the application than it is in a proprietary hardware layer. And, and that's, I mean, th that type of mindset is proliferating everywhere. That's kind of the app dev, you know, DevOps versus DevOps, the dinosaur. Yeah. Right? Yes. We talked about that too. Right. I mean, it's a, it's a mindset thing. And, and I think that that's across all, it's across storage, it's across cloud, it's across big data. There's a lot of that going on. And, and that's a clear, you know, beyond technology, we were just talking about this offline, is, is it's a... Uh, you know, massive inertia from those two camps and how those evolve. Yeah, so do you think the enterprise guys um, are eventually going to get this? Do they acquire companies to get it, or do they just get slammed? I, I mean, how long does it take? These cycles are 15 or 20 years. Maybe we're 10 years in if, if, uh, if, that, yeah. you know, if Salesforce was, was, was the first start. I mean, I think you know, they want to get it. That doesn't mean they can get there. There's a lot that gets in the way from them you know, getting from A to B. Um, I, but, but I don't think I don't think the market's quite ready for it yet, broadly. And you know, for now, the enterprise guys will just, you know, do gateways or get on cloud as they can, and then over time they get to cloud. You know, and, and I don't think it's enabled by the enterprise guys because uh, one of the cool things Simon said today was you're not in the cloud if you have to pay for it before you use it. <laughs> and that if you use that determination, that eliminates practically everyone that says they're in well, in the like, cloud. That's like the heat that Ellison got from uh, Benioff around saying cloud in a box. Right. Cloud doesn't come in a box. Right. And of course, Ellison. What's had, had the uh, what, what's the most exciting thing that you've seen here at Citrix Synergy? I like the um, I like what these guys. Re receiver's pretty cool to me. I mean, if you think of a, a an abstraction layer that that kind of bridges a bit of what you're doing personally with what you're doing professionally, and, and also from an IT perspective, eliminates the concern. So no longer it's, you know, you're no longer concerned about managing devices, you're managing users. And, and so if you can kind of abstract that layer between, or that relationship between the two, all you care about now is, is the users, you care less about what type of devices they're using. And the defense intel, the DIA, their, his keynote was basically that, is that I want to get away from managing devices. Right now they can't, in, in the government, they can't, you can't walk out of a trusted zone with a device. You just can't do it. He wants to get out of that business and care less about the device and more about the user and the data. Data and the that apps. Business. Oh. Yeah, and so you know, Citrix is doing, I think, a lot there in, in ab abstracting that, that data in, in user profile f independent of any device. And, right, and so use whatever device you want. That stuff's pretty cool. And, and I think that, you know, that, that uh, allows them to ha enable a lot more things. Uh, mobility wise. What do you think about the go to manage stuff around that the Citrix Online folks are doing around collaboration? Have you been following that at all? The SaaS based IT services for small, medium sized business. Is that just a, uh, a bumper sticker for them? Is it just a placeholder? Are they actually doing anything there? I think it's, it's kind of like the redheaded stepchild business for them. I mean, it, it does a lot. It's, it's a big SaaS business on its own, but it gets no attention. I mean, C Citrix is interesting because they have four really interesting business lines. And in terms of kind of brand attention, I mean, everyone knows who GoToMeeting is, but in terms of kind of real contribution, it always falls towards the bottom. And the funny thing is on, on earnings calls, if you listen to a Citrix earnings call, no one ever asks about GoToMeeting. Right. But <laughs> it's, a, it's a legit SaaS business. And it That's is. a good point. That's a good point. 
I mean, it, it really, it, on yeah. its own, I mean, the, 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 you know, it's, Citrix broadly, what's cool about the company is it's four legit businesses by themselves. I mean, Zen Server is, is more legit by the day, validated by public cloud. Zen Desktop on its own is a legit business. Netscaler, um, from, an F, you know, from, a, from a networking standpoint, yeah, is, a legit, F5. is a legit yeah. you know, app delivery controller. And then you have the SaaS component with WebEx, uh, with what they're doing there. You know, relative to WebEx, right? And yeah, so yeah. those are four standalone businesses. They're trying to tell a cohesive story. But the funny, p you know, to your original question, go to ma go to meeting is always falls to the bottom because it's just there's better stories why to does tell. No, why does no one care about it? Just because it's not interesting? It's, or? Just, it's I don't know. It's more tactical and boring. Uh, it's starting to become meaningful from a, c a contribution standpoint, though. Well, the good news is they'd care if it didn't work. So repeat the four lines again: Netscaler. So it's Zen. Netscaler, Zen, Zen Server, Zen Desktop, and SaaS. And SaaS, collaboration. And then, and they compete with different people, right? Uh, uh, Zen Server, that's really VMware, right? And yeah, well, on the, on the private cloud side, VMware. Public cloud side, you know, these guys have some pretty good momentum. Yeah. There would be VMware, too. Right, and then and then Zen Desktop, obviously, VMware, and then and then Yeah, Netscaler. VMware, I mean, there's just tons of Zen Desktop options. Sure. User virtualization, app virtualization. And then Net, Net, Netscaler is F5, and then SaaS is... Yeah, F5 and some other guys, yeah. SaaS is Microsoft, Cisco. Cisco, WebEx. Right. Guys like that, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, we were talking about acquisitions yesterday, you know, and you made the point that there's pretty diverse businesses there. They don't necessarily fit all together in terms of a package that somebody would necessarily want to buy. And then you pointed out other reasons that they might be acquisition proof, but that, that's, a, uh, that, that's a, a, a bit of complexity to an acquirer potentially. It's, not a, it's certainly not a pure play, yeah, right? right. And, and so you're, you, have to, you have to marry those businesses into something with whatever the acquiring organization is, it, get, it gets harder. But the, I mean, they're all strategic components by themselves. Right. All right, Dave, I know you were rushing off to uh, see this next keynote. So uh, this is Lionsgate, I think, coming up now, right? No, no. Uh, no, later. after that, for 3 o'clock. All right, good. All right, well, thanks for t stopping by real quick. Right. Appreciate it. Thanks, guys. We'll see you around. See you back at the ranch. Uh, Dave Cahill, um, we talk about smart nodes, Michael. Uh, he, we're from Boston. He's a, he's a wicked smart node. Wicked, <laughs> wicked smart. <laughs>